<laughs> exactly. Yeah, that whole yeah, maybe it's that whole whitewashing of of certain things that people got really offended by cuz I I understand that to a certain extent. Yeah. It's like where um like we have these foods that we were made fun of when we we're younger, but then you just one white chef that tries to educate other people about a food that was already ours. It kind of takes the the it, it's our spirit from our food, like our culture. And yeah. you get to use it whenever you feel like it's okay to use it. Yeah. I think that's where people get a little weirded out by it, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, wait, hold on a second. I used to get fucking clowned on for that food. And now that, you know, you have, you know, uh, George uh, Pickle McPherson comes up, you know, and he's just, <laughs> he's over here just telling people like, hey man, so this is how you're going to cook chow mein and this is how it's going to be when it's authentic. Yeah. Because that's the verbiage where, where it fucks them up. Yeah. It's like, Maybe you shouldn't have said the word authentic. Said this mm. is how I learned how to make Chinese food from blah 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 blah. Yeah, and this is this is this is my version of it. Mm -hmm. Cool, you know. But then when you say something like authenticity with the culture who didn't even get to own up to to the dopeness of it, and you get to take credit for it first, yeah. that's where people start to feel a little weird, you know. Yeah, I mean, when I hear that stuff too, I'm I'm also like, he's probably just talking to other white people. Probably, yeah. You know, I feel, like, I feel like that too. Like that one white guy that was doing. You remember he got a lot of flack for oh, fucking the, pho, the pho. This is how you make authentic pho and all that. To me, what I saw was a guy introducing Vietnamese noodles to his culture. Mm. Not to me. To white people. He was talking to other white people that didn't know what this was. Yeah. So then I, but I also see why Vietnamese people were like, what the fuck, bro? Like that, that's not, you didn't even do it right or whatever, yeah. you know? And then, then it's like, oh shit, like maybe uh, you should have considered that the whole world's a part of this shit. But I don't know, man, this shit's kind of weird because you know that guy, um, Ivan Ramen. Oh yeah. He's supposed, he's fucking sick, right? Like yeah. I haven't tasted his stuff, but there's a man who dedicated He speaks years. Japanese too, by the way. Yeah, he speaks Japanese. He opened a, a ramen. So Ivan Ramen's this Jewish guy from the East Coast uh, who went to Japan, l fell in love with the culture, and he loved ramen so much that he worked at a ramen shop, paid his dues as an apprentice, built his own ramen shop. Successful ramen shop too in Japan. In Japan, he was covered in the Japanese news and all that, and people started... Um, you know, eating his ramen there. Then he decided to come to the States and build a shop. And um, I was kind of thinking about that. And I'm like, man, that's pretty interesting because here's a guy who paid dues and he's dedicated his life to ramen. And then I'm Japanese American and I haven't spent the time that he did. But if I open up a ramen shop, people will look at me and say, that's authentic because versus your, him because, because I'm Japanese. Face, yeah. Right. And I'm like, but is that really fair to that guy, though? Because he's paid a lot of dues, and he's actually lived in Japan longer than I have. Yeah. And he's studied under Japanese ramen guys. So who's going to be more authentic? I don't even know. Yeah, and you know, when you say that, too, about the pho guy, I could really understand him. I, maybe now that I look back at it, too, and I agree with you. I did a whole video about it, too, where I even parried it. But I was like... <laughs> funny though <laughs> yeah i was like i understand because it's just he probably was speaking to other white people to make sure that they don't fuck it up yeah so he was trying to do a service to asian people but yeah. it just came off wrong it came yeah. off like he knew everything or like that's his shit yeah. you know like i don't know it's it's just man when it comes to culture it's so sensitive it is man you got to be careful especially if you're white and shit because it's not really that guy that fucked up it's just all the people that's been fucking up <laughs> yeah Dude, there's a guy also, too, he owns his joint called Pak Pak, and Pak Pak is his Thai place, right? This motherfucker goes to Thailand every fucking year. Yeah. And he, he speaks Thai. He's a white, first of all, dude, Thai is a very hard language in general, and for a white guy to learn Thai and shit, yeah. and he eats, like, all the weird, like, real shit, pig, coagulated pig I blood with spice. Now. Let's do it. That dude, that fool's like sucking a period out of a pig's pussy. Oh, no. Like, this fool's, like, <laughs> this fool's eating some crazy shit, and then, you know, you'll read some certain reviews, like, he's, you know, why is this guy, you know, trying to represent for Thai people. He's not making real authentic Thai food. It was yeah. like, well, he speaks Thai. He goes every fucking year, learns from chefs over there, you know, pays due respect to the culture, make sure that it's authentic as he could make it or what his versions of it. Yeah. It's like, what more do you want for the guy? Like, chef, like I think cooking is an, is an art in and of itself. Yeah. You And it's kind of weird for somebody to say to somebody else, like, you can't do this because you don't look like us. That sounds yeah. racist to me. That See, that's, yeah, that's racist too. Like coming from our side, yeah. Saying like, oh, you're Mexican, you can't be cooking Asian food, or you don't know authentic Asian food. And I'm all like, I know a lot of Mexican chefs at Chinese restaurants that could make Ooh. some 
real he they could work the walk like a motherfucker like, you know lomo, gracias <laughs> motherfucker <laughs> dude i was in um sydney australia and man so it was like me darian and 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 no and we were, we we did this seminar out there and um we had like probably one of the best thai foods outside of thailand like it was so fucking good right and then we're like man who who's like who's the owner and all that and then this white guy pops out <laughs> good eye mate <laughs> literally right <laughs> this white guy comes out and we're like yo man like compliments like this is probably the best shit i've ever had outside of like this is super real shit yeah and he's like oh my god thank you for saying that i appreciate it and he was saying like you know if it, it's always the Asians that tell me thanks. how good it is, <laughs> and goes and and in white people, they, they they I get scolded by other white people. I don't know shit. He's like he literally gets scolded by white people that this isn't authentic. Yeah, I don't know and he's shit. like, dude, the cook that's in the kitchen right now, that guy's on a work visa. <laughs> like, and he's and he's like he's like so he get, he be, he basically has this work program that he uh, rotates from Thailand. And he, I, um, him, so his wife is tied too. So he goes out there and then like every time they find like a dope, like street vendor or something, they're like, oh my God, this is so freaking good, you know? And then they, they, they're like, do you want to come to America? And then they'll come in, I mean, uh, Australia and then they'll work at his restaurant and then teach his other, uh, Thai cooks That's that are residents there. Good trade dude yeah and then they so every several months they get new new cooks just coming in teaching them different dishes so it's as authentic or as like get. yeah because it's fresh and it's like cooks that have like they're just they you know they were just in thailand like a month ago yeah my mouth is watering that's just yeah so, good. <laughs> so all the stuff and he's constantly trying to evolve and figure out like new stuff so he's very passionate him and his wife are both passionate as hell they're they live there like half of the year because his wife's family is out there yeah and um so but but the funny thing is he was saying that. like why people would stop him and and they think he's like a worker there they don't think that he owns them and then they'll they'll say like yeah you know this was terrible this isn't authentic and like people will complain to him like they're like I've been to Thailand and it's not I would just like bring this. out all the chefs and they'll just come out what what's going on yeah. you know <laughs> like that's so weird though that's what yeah. I'm saying people who are so loud about food sometimes you guys just don't know shit so shut the fuck up like if you like. Like, that's the thing, too. If if something visually... That's why I like David Chang, right? When he was doing the whole ugly, delicious yeah. thing. It's like, yo, the shit tastes fucking good. Fuck your perception of what authenticity is. Yeah. Which is something I really vibe with. Does it taste good? Right? That's... Yeah, that's all that matters. Yeah. Does it taste good? And, you know, we, we could... Like I said, we can go and talk about, you know, paying respect to cultures or whatever after that. But just initially what it is. is how I feel about film, too, yeah. right? Before you go in and watch a film, before you go ahead and you dissect this film from top to bottom about the lighting, the cinematography, watch it. Did you like it? Yes or no? Start with that first. Yeah. And then you can go ahead and dissect it after because you're not even giving something a chance. Mm -hmm. And that's what I just fucking hate sometimes. I, I also think people have expectations or like... So like picky people, they have a specific thing that they want, right? Yeah. Or they expect something to happen. So even if something's actually good, because they're not open to it, they go, "That's yeah. not what. That's not good because that's not what I wanted." Mm -hmm. So I, I get it. Like if you bite into a fucking mango, you're expecting a mango, mm -hmm. not like a hamburger, right? So like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they might be surprised, but at the same time, you got to be o more open with food to enjoy food. Yeah. I had, like, for example, like, I've had Korean food my whole life the way that my mom made it, right? And if I just based it off the way my mom made it if, uh, and not thought about how something tastes, then I would hate everybody else's Korean food, right? But there are certain restaurants in, in K-Town that make certain foods better than my mom does. Huh. Hands down. Yeah. Because it's their specialty. Yeah. And I eat it and I'm like, look at my mom. I do hear that a lot though. People are like, oh, my mom can make it better. Yeah. Like they always say that shit all day. I'm like, then fucking stay at home and eat all day. Like <laughs> what the fuck? What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. That's how it is. Like certain, like my mom makes really great side dishes and I think she makes better than other people because they don't season it as well. But there are certain things that I've eaten at restaurants that I would eat their food over my mom's. Like for a fact. Yeah. You know, because they're just better at it than my mom is. Right. And, and, and even my mom knows. She goes, mm, better than mine. You know, it's better than mine. And that's why she'll go out and eat that instead of her own shit. So being open to these ideas about food is, is very fucking important. Yeah, I can't, I can't really chill with picky eaters, man. 
picky eaters are hard to enjoy life with because food is like a big way of